Hello, this is Broyer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for Farming Simulator 22. As we continue our start from scratch run here on Zalanka, playing our Feed My Kids run. My kids are getting hungry again. We are, it's time to harvest. They've been out of food for a little while. They've been having to, you know, eat grass out in the field. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Uh, but it's time for us to harvest. We got the uh, carrots here. Obviously, we got the uh, red beets over on the other side of that field. And then up there north, we have the parsnips. So let's get these going. Let's get our tractors. Actually, I need to open the door. Forgive the fact that I just teleported in here. Um, got the doors open. Let's get in here. Let's get our tractors rolling. Pick up one of our little harvesters over here. And I guess we'll start with the carrots because it's close. And then we'll probably probably put one harvester on each of the fields for now. Um, no sense doubling them up. Plus, if we get one on each, we can start processing some of the food right away. Obviously, we're below 20,000 bucks, so... Things are starting to get a little bit tight, but this is going to be one of our best. I mean, this will be our best harvest that we've had since we started this. So it's going to be a good one, I think. Um, let's go ahead and get the worker started here. And then we'll go grab the other tractor. There go our carrots looking good. Let's grab this tractor. Oh, you know what? I just realized. Um, let me actually stop you for a second, my friend. I didn't get the message probably because I had the worker going, but it is actually raining right now. We didn't lose much. That's okay. Let me fast forward past the rain. Possible rain doesn't actually affect the carrots, but I assume it does just like any other harvest. Just to be safe, we'll, we'll fast forward past the rain. It's not going to be a problem. When does the rain actually end? Rain ends at 11, it looks like. So we'll go fast forward a little bit longer. Not a big deal. That should be it for the rain. Still says it's raining, but let me just start you for a second. Okay, I don't get a message for anything. Looks like we are good. Okay. It's possible, again, that the carrots are immune to the rain because they're a root crop. It's always a possibility, but just to be safe, it doesn't take that much to fast forward a little bit and make sure that we're covered. Get this guy over here on the red beets. Let's buy some new boxes. Oh, can I unfold first? That would make sense. Come on. There we go. There's our new boxes. Get you lined up here. Again, this this will be our best harvest for this field. The first time we harvested, uh, I believe that already had crop on there, so we had to kind of go with the lower yield. This is maximum yield on this one. This should be good. Cool. All right, get that rolling. And it all looks looks good there. Looks good here. Already furnished with his first pass. He's already got a whole box filled. So, I mean, we'll let this run for a little bit. But um, once we have to start transporting boxes, this is going to go pretty quickly here. Are we looking on the precision farming of things? Obviously, we know the nitrogen is low. The yield's going to be mixed results, but should start getting better again as time goes by. I get this is our best field right here by far. But we can already see we're at a 92 on the environmental score here. Um, the only thing that's bad is our tillage. And I, what did I determine about? I know I talked, looked it up, and I totally forgot what I read about the tillage. I may need to go look it up again just to make sure I get it right. But we had everything else basically maxed out. Nitrogen apparently is a little bit off. On that field, nitrogen's uh, almost perfect there, but still a little bit off. Everything else looks perfect. Everything else looks great. So as soon as we get all these fields harvested, we will be maxed on everything except the tillage. And then we'll kind of go from there. So apparently you're kind of bridging the gap there and causing some issues, but that's all right. Uh, let me fast forward a little bit. I'll get a couple of these boxes built up and then we will go from there. For some reason, he decided not to finish that row, but we can fix that later. Not, not going to be that big of a problem. Probably because there's that little gap there that somehow got missed, but I will bring you guys back here once we've got a little bit more progress. 
All right, we're back. Got a little bit of it done. We've got one full load of red beets already taken over. Here's a combo load with carrots and red beets we're going to drop off. Uh, I did look up the tillage thing again. I, I remember I'd looked at it, and I just had forgotten kind of what what the issue was specifically with carrots and um, the other root crops. And, and the issue is that we're not direct drilling, right? We're not direct drilling our, our seed. So because we have to plow before we do anything, and we're not doing any sort of direct drilling... We do lose the tillage score because of that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a way. I, I wonder if we like shallow cultivate after or something weird like that. If that would account for the missing tillage and if we would even want to. You know, I mean, I don't even know if we want to do that extra step or not. Because obviously that's a lot of extra steps just to get what would be an extra couple percentage points. Really not a lot, to be perfectly honest. We're going to be... Once we get all these fields done, we're going to be at what? Three, six, nine, 12, like probably like 12%, maybe? Actually, more, higher than that. Probably 12, about, probably at 13%. So we're only going to be missing a percentage or two off of uh, what our total could be. So it might be something we don't necessarily need to chase down. Um, it could be some combination of things that would help us out. I honestly just don't know. Uh, if we go look at. I don't know. Let's go look at. Not subsolars, obviously. Uh, we're going to skip over those. Um, we already looked at the cedars and planters. None of those have the new crop on them, right? So there's no direct drilling option there. Could just look at a good old cultivator and see, you know, a shallow cultivator would give us a seed bed, which would allow us to have, you know, pre presumably a, um, a place to put, you know, the fresh seed or something like that. Uh, it's also, did the ridges, I don't think the ridges made a difference, did they? I, th I think we saw that the ridges didn't actually do anything, so yeah, I don't know. It's going to be something we're going to have to kind of maybe trial and error experiment with and see if there's a combination of things that would be best suited, or we just ignore it. We just accept that we will never have that tillage score up for the root crops and that's okay, because maybe the investment of trying to get that extra step thrown in there is not as good as just going straight to seed and just moving on with their lives, you know what I mean? As, as I said before many times, you know, time is also money. And I know it's a cliche thing to say, but it's true. Like, if we spend extra time doing something and we get very little value out of it, then there's really no point in doing it. Like, we're wasting wasting our time at that point. Uh, how close are you guys on a next load? You're actually both very close to the next load, so we'll wait. And we can get these moved off of here in a moment. So far, things are going pretty good, though. Other than, other than that score, everything else looks great, honestly. Actually, now we are almost... Looks like we are fully maxed out across the board. You're a little bit low on the uh, nitrogen. Uh, that might have just been because of a section that we had that had bad nitrogen. But I think even as high as you are, it's going to be fine. 95, 91, those are two very respectable, good scores for us. I mean, we. I, I was going to see if we could skip the plowing altogether, but we just can't. Like, these all need plowing, right? Um... Oh, you know, I just realized there's some weeds down here. That's all right. No biggie. If you look at the yield on this field compared to what we had last time. <laughs> last time it was all orange. Now it's all green, which is good. Going to get a lot more crops this time around from this particular field. How much would a shallow cultivator cost us? And again, I don't know that that actually even would do the thing that we're looking for. Um, I keep looking in the wrong section. Because uh, shallow cultivator, yeah, I mean, def technically gets us a uh, seed bed. We could also go with like one of these, I guess. One of these uh, disc arrows, but I just don't know. I mean, we need to kind of, I probably need to do the math. I probably need to figure out a good size shallow cultivator, right? One of these that specifically says creates a seed bed is my guess is what we would be kind of targeting. Um, some of these get pretty expensive. Actually, that one's not bad at all. That's a six meter. That's one of the new ones too. We can even add a cedar unit to it, but what does the cedar unit actually do? Oh, wait, do we not have this one? I feel like I've looked at this one very recently because <laughs> I actually looked at like one of these like cheapo basic designs because it was cheap. What did I look at this one for? I don't actually remember. 
But, um, there's that one. That one's very cheap. And would definitely be an option, I think. Where did, where did we get that one? Did we not, did we get one of those already? We got the subsoiler. We got the cedars. Technically, this is counting as a cedar, right? Which, don't know that that's ever going to do what we want it to do, right? Because... I don't know. What are the connecting pieces for that? Because that's obviously new, right? That's one of the new things that we have. Uh, what was that under? That was under... I don't think it was under vegetable technology, was it? No, there's nothing here for that. There is a cultivator, though, listed. So maybe that is our problem. Maybe the fact that we have not been cultivating is, is a bad thing. So maybe we try that out before seeding. I mean, it wouldn't take that long, I suppose. Make sure there's nothing new under either of these. Not really. Uh, if we go down to the new pack, though, we can, we can check out uh, what, what extra equipment they added in with the premium. So there's all the equipment added for the premium. New mowers, new, obviously new weeders. Um, some disc arrows. I mean, again, more cedars, but again, those cedars are not really what we're looking for here. There's a cultivator right there, but I don't know. I guess this one can attach to that. I don't know if I can do the fertilizing at the same time, though, because we still need to do the plowing, right? I mean, we're skipping the ridge creation because I guess we kind of decided that that wasn't necessary. Oh, I think that, that subsoil that I just saw might have been under a different pack then. I mean, this one would, it's just a straight up cultivator. It's not, a, it's not a shallow cultivator. So yeah, I don't know. I need to play around with it a little bit and figure something out, some combination that will get us what we need. Um, we'll kind of go from there. All right, let me back you up and get you unloaded here, my friend. sure how you got off center like that, but line you back up better. All right. Buy some more boxes and go. Let me get this guy fixed as well. Get you to go pick those up out of the, get those out of the way. Actually, gonna start getting outnumbered by how quickly these guys go now. Oh, stop, dude! Really, you're gonna back up all the way before turning around? That's a little silly. I mean, I'm tempted to try the shallow cultivator because what's it going to hurt? Over time, I mean, it may, it's only going to cost us like 25,000 bucks or 30,000 bucks, whatever, whatever we set it up with. And over time, it'll eventually, you know, pay for itself. Uh, it may not pay for itself very quickly, but it'd be something that could eventually pay for itself. Worth, worth taking a look at just so we know if it works, I guess. I'm willing to spend a little money to experiment here. I need to turn on my production facilities. Get those rolling again so carrots can be turned on. Actually, we turn on all three. We'll have the parsnips dropped off here soon enough.
All right. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, we'll put a skip in there. We'll come back once we're a bit further along with these fields. All right, we're back. Uh, got made some good progress, as you guys can see. Uh, we're about halfway on both of these. Uh, this one's almost full. In fact, if we go take a look at the uh, kind of the plowing meter, because that's the easiest way to see, or even the harvest meter, whichever. But you can see we're about basically halfway with this field, slightly under halfway with this field. So let's go see what our production totals are currently. We're sitting at about, I think I have one more load of red beets that I'm about to send off. So we're sitting around 50,000 at the halfway mark. Maybe a little bit more once we're all full of said and done, but let's just use 50,000 as a, you know, underselling number. And I think that's a good, good safe bet. So for 50,000, that means the full field will be about 100,000, right? Um, so 100,000 uh, liters uh, times 0.6 effectively is 60,000 liters of all of the baby foods, right? Um, and all three of these fields are similar size. Again, we're going to undercut it a little bit. There's actually going to be more than what the number I'm, I'm giving you. But 60,000 liters. And again, our price would be that we're kind of expecting is around a thousand, right? We'll call it 900. So 60,000 times three, because there's three of them, right? Times three. That's 180,000 total times, uh, well, divided by a thousand effectively, but times 900. So we're looking at $162,000. Uh, which I think I did say was what I, I expected if we were off by half, which which we were kind of warm when I talked at the end of last episode. I think the end of last episode I said around 350. Uh, if we're off by half, it'll be around 175, which 162, again, undercutting a little bit, would be around that 175. And 175 is a pretty good number. That That's that's fine. We're okay with 175. We could definitely uh, live with that being our number. Where is... You are... Kind of, oh, you're up here. Kind of off in no man's land, mister. Might actually flip you around to the other side just so we can uh, start a new path a little bit better here. Let me just drop these boxes off over here. As you can see, we are very, very low on funds. Um, we did have a bunch of equipment hit its new hourly reset. Uh, so a lot of equipment did just get redinged on um, the uh, leases. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, we, we kind of expect that type of stuff. Right, we'll make do. We'll figure it out. I mean, I'm not exactly sure how far off we'll be, but again, 175,000 bucks coming our way. We'll more than pay for all of this, uh, these leases and things. Maybe not by a super significant amount, but enough that we should be, should be clean when we, when we get done with the full year here. I'm going to set you a little off center. So hopefully you can pick up that little strip there. That's on the side. All right. You are good to grab these and go to the store. This trailer will hold five pallets or four pallets, I should say, because four would be obviously a perfect full load of a harvester, but we'll make do. I mean, the parsnip field is going to be a little bit bigger than these other two. So whatever number I just gave you, you know, add maybe another 15, 20% on top of it for that one specifically. But it's close. It's, it's a, uh, I think that's a worst case number is 175,000 bucks is the worst case number. It would not surprise me at all if it goes a bit above that, especially with the, uh, the precision farming percentage. I did not calculate the precision farming percentage. Once you factor that in, you now we're going to get an extra at least 10% from that, possibly a little bit more, right? So um, probably closer to 12%. So once you add in that, we're over 200K right there. I mean, 200K is not a crazy profit, but it's a good profit because we spend about 10,000 bucks per month on our leases and loans, I believe. And then so that's $120,000 a year, which is significant. And then, you know, you figure another twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 just uh, hourly costs and things like that that build up over the course of a year. So we're talking, looking at about 150,000 bucks. If we sell for 200, it's $50,000 profit. Not a lot of profit, but it is a profit. Profit is profit. I mean, even break even would be acceptable, honestly, because break even means we're still leasing to own and paying off our loans and things of that nature. 
Did you finish up or are you just stuck? You did finish up. Cool. I didn't get to see the message pop up. Uh, so even break even, we're still advancing our overall progress because of the, uh, the lease to own and the, the loans getting paid off. Because once all those get paid off and the leases get all done, I mean, that, then that $120,000 plus dollars that we're spending a year becomes zero. At some point, it would be nice to get a third tractor just so we could do all three crop types at the same time. Although, we would need to get a bigger trailer because this thing is not going to cut it three boxes at a time for forever. So I have to drop over here, drop some off to the side, put that out of the way, grab that next one, then come pick up the other two. Technically, there's probably a way to just drop off one, but this is easy enough as it is. There's a very good chance we will go negative before we sell all of this crop, all of this product. The question is, will we go negative before... Um, we're done with the harvest. If we can get done with the harvest at least, because that if we go negative, we can't use workers anymore. So if we go, if we can get the harvest done and then go negative, like because of the month shift or something like that, that's okay. I can live with that. Obviously, we have the option of selling some product earlier than you know, we would maybe normally like. But that's a way to get us a little bit extra money as well. Honestly, fifty thousand dollar profit is is actually pretty significant. Just for starting out, right? It's our first couple years here, and we're already potentially making fifty thousand dollar profit. That is really good. And theoretically, it will only go up from there. these dropped off actually by the time we get these dropped off it'll be time to call the episode so we will do that i'll probably bring you guys back as we're starting the parsnips or something of that nature so we'll kind of keep cruising along here i mean by doing these relatively large jump skips it means i get to watch a lot of netflix or youtube <laughs> videos you know i get to chill here while everything's going on transporting stuff back and forth Try to not make it too boring for you guys, but can't sit here for 12 hours and only make one video. I do have to bring you guys back every once in a while to uh, to just kind of get a little bit of content going. All right, that is that. Yeah, I think we will go ahead and put a cut in there. When we come back, like I said, I'll have these two fields done. We'll be working on the parsnips and really kind of trying to figure out the status of our money situation and kind of go from there. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.